All right, how's everybody doing out there in mathematic land? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and today we're going to take a look at another example of indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. Now remember, indeterminate forms are going to have this form. They're either going to be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, and when we evaluate limits, we've got to get them into that one of those two forms. Sometimes you'll see them in one of these other forms, and if you see it in one of these other indeterminate forms, we're going to have to use some math trickery to go ahead and use our algebraic skills to get it to be 0 over 0. Ooh, what's that? Oh, my tea is done. Thanks, Karan, for giving me that tea from India. That stuff is phenomenal. It's really good. So let me go ahead and pause the video real quickly while I go get some tea. All right, now that I've got my tea, I can, we can go ahead and finish this up. Stuff is absolutely delicious. Thanks again, Karan. I really appreciate it. It's a great way to spend snow days drinking a nice cup of tea from India. All right, moving on. So here we go. We're going to have this limit as x goes to 0 from the right-hand side. That's what a little plus means of the function x to the x power. Now, when we plug in 0 from the right-hand side, that's going to give us this form of 0 to the 0 power. What? That's one of our other indeterminate forms. So what we're going to do to solve this problem is we are going to have to manipulate it to get it into the form of either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So now what we're going to do first is we're going to assume that the limit exists and is some number y. What that'll do is give us this equation. y equals the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x to the x power. Now here's where a technique is going to come in that we're going to have to use for this type of problem. What we're going to do is take the natural log of both sides, and you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to take natural log of y is equal to the natural log of the limit of this blob. Now when we do that, we're going to have to, we're going to use the definition of continuity to rewrite the piece on the right to be the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of natural log of x to the x power. And that's the definition of continuity because we can do that. Now with that, we're going to now use properties of logarithmic functions to go ahead and rewrite this slightly so that we're going to have the limit as x goes to 0 again from the right, but we're going to take our exponent and move that down in front of natural log. So all of this just kind of gets us into this form of x times natural log of x. Now, what we're going to do next, because right here is we're going to take a look at the, just the natural log of x piece, because we know if we plug 0 into this first x right here, that's going to give us 0 times. But the natural log of x, you have to remember the graph for natural log goes like this. So as you approach 0 from the right hand side, this piece right here is going to be 0 times negative infinity. So it's not quite the form that we want of 0 over 0, but this is one of our other indeterminate forms. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this. So what we have to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over x times 1 over x. Because when we do this, you know, here your denominator is just 1. So we're going to multiply by 1 over x times 1 over x. Doing that is going to allow us to rewrite this. Our limit as x goes to 0 from the right. Now, these guys right here, nicely, will cancel out. And so you're just going to be left with natural log of x over 1 over x. And when we evaluate that limit as x goes to 0 from the right, again, natural log of x, that part, is going to go to infinity. And since it's going down forever, that's actually going to go to negative infinity. And then 1 over x, that particular graph, and you have to remember what that graph looks like. So the 1 over x graph, that's going to look like this piece right here. So that is going to go to positive infinity. So we've got infinity over infinity. So now we've got that kind of, um, 
form and we can go ahead and reevaluate that. We can take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Now when we do that, the limit as x goes to 0 from the right, derivative of natural log is just 1 over x. And then the derivative of 1 over x is going to give us negative 1 over x squared. Cleaning that up, you know, using our algebraic skills, when we do that, you're going to be left with the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. All of that other piece just cleans up to negative x. Now this is pretty straightforward stuff. When you plug in 0 from the right hand side, the opposite is 0. Our final limit here is going to be 0. But we're not quite done here because we can't just say, all right, this was 0 because notice what we had this set equal to. So this is natural log of y, our limit that we're assuming exists. So natural log of some number is 0. So I'm going to go over here to finish this piece up. So when we take the natural log, of y, this limit that we assumed exists, and we're setting that equal to zero. I need to solve a logarithmic equation. One of the techniques is you're going to exponentiate both sides. So we're going to e both sides, as a lot of math teachers will say. Now when you e natural log of y, you're just going to be left with y, and e to the zero power is just going to be one. This is our final answer. So what we're going to conclude then is that our limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side of x to the x power is going to have the value of 1. Now of course you can check this on any graphing calculator with a computer algebra system or you could verify it graphically by taking a look at it on a TI-8384 graphing calculator. Thanks very much for watching this example. You guys have a great snow day and I'll catch up with you soon. Peace out.